Hello guys, welcome back to my second channel. Today we are going to be going over some things that I am currently loving. Now, I used to love watching favorites videos. I can't even remember whose channels I would watch them on, but like way back before I even started my channel, I used to love this type of content. And I think I even did a few favorites videos when I first started my main channel. And yeah, I just was thinking that there's a lot of things I've currently been loving and wanted to share them with you. <laughs> now, of course, most of these things are related to health, to fitness, that sort of thing. I think some of them, oh no, I do have like a, some lifestyle stuff as well. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of everything in this video. <laughs> and as I'm sitting here looking at my list, I'm just looking at my shoes over there and realizing <laughs> that I want to share one pair of those with you as well. Maybe I'll just start off with those. Okay, these are shoes. I don't even know what these shoes are called, but I have been absolutely loving them. They are from the brand APL and I probably have too many pairs of shoes from this brand, but right now these are my favorite, both for just working out and also wearing out as well um, with a more casual outfit. Loving these. I think they come in like an all white as well and I'm not sure what other colors, but super, super cute and stylish. And these go really well with the next thing I'm gonna talk about, which is also clothes. And then I promise I'll get into some other things <laughs> afterwards because I know this is a little bit women focused right now, but I do have some things that men will love as well. So bear with me. Okay, I just had to get these out of the laundry and they are absolutely covered in cat hair because I was wearing them yesterday. But these are the Lululemon Groove Pants and I cannot believe <laughs> that I have these pants again. I will put a photo of me wearing them up on the screen, but oh my God, for any of you guys who are around my age, like mid to late 20s, and our Canadian, you will probably remember from like middle school, high school, how popular the Lululemon Groove pants were. So these are basically just like, I guess, yoga pants with a flare at the bottom. So the flare has been out for several years and just in the last year or so, it's kind of come back into fashion. <laughs> like I had a pair of these when they were first popular in middle school that I wore all the time tucked into my Uggs with like skateboarding shoes. <laughs> and it's so funny to me that I have now purchased a new pair and I am so obsessed with them. They are so cute, not to mention so comfortable, so soft. They are often sold out. I kept having to check back on the Lululemon website <laughs> for a couple of weeks before they came back in stock and I was quick enough to order them before they sold out again. Now, as I kind of already said, the fabric that they are, uh, they get a lot of cat hair on them. So I'm usually pretty strategic with them. Like I'll put them on right before I go out of the house. I'll do like a lint roll and then I'll run out before my cats can touch me and before I sit down on my couch or anything. But yesterday I kind of gave up on that. So they're a little bit covered, but super, super cute. And with those APL shoes, so, so cute. Um, absolutely loving these. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is actually a drink. And this is known as a creamy long black. Now, if you're Australian, then you'll know what a long black is. If you're North American, it's the same thing as an Americano. <laughs> I know that the coffee culture in North America is a little bit different than it is in Australia. So basically an Americano is like two espresso shots and then cold water. And that's the same thing, uh, not cold water two espresso shots and then hot water, that's an Americano. And that's the same thing as a long black, but I saw this on TikTok. Okay, well, first off I should say, if you're drinking espresso coffee, usually you'll get like a latte or a cappuccino. And so the shots of coffee will be in the cup and then the milk is frothed. And then depending on how it's frothed and how, how it's frothed, and how it's poured will determine if it's flat white, if it's a latte, if it's cappuccino, but then obviously with a long black, it is, there's no milk in it. But this method of making a creamy long black, I saw it on TikTok. I'll put like the original video up here, I'll have it playing. 
but you basically pour one shot in your mug or your glass and then you pour one shot into the milk jug and once you pour the shot into the milk jug you add cold water in and then you froth the cold water and the espresso shot and yeah basically it makes it kind of like the consistency of a latte but there's no milk and so for people who are doing intermittent fasting or just don't want to be drinking lattes and whatnot but don't really like just having black coffee this is such a game changer i don't know how just frothing the espresso and the water changes the taste like this but yeah fantastic if you have an espresso machine at home definitely give this a try i feel like i just gave you like a crash course on espresso coffee which oh, i kind of had to explain it though so if you guys didn't know what I was talking about, hopefully that made sense. And if you do know about espresso coffee, if you're Australian and you're a coffee snob, like I now am, I hope I explained that well. <laughs> Next up on my list is tracking ketones. So I know whenever anyone first gets started with the keto diet, it's easy to become hyper fixated on ketones. There's urine ketone strips, which a lot of people use right at the start. These actually aren't that accurate once you've been in ketosis for a while. And then you can also use a blood reader and there's also breath readers as well. Now, I don't think tracking ketones is necessary. If you're eating a low carb diet, if you can go multiple hours in between meals without getting hangry, without getting big energy crashes, then you're in ketosis and the exact level doesn't matter too much if your goals are just like weight loss and improved insulin sensitivity and just better general health, fewer cravings, better energy, that sort of thing. But tracking ketones can be helpful if you're trying to get into a deeper state of ketosis and get those therapeutic benefits. So I have been recently just tracking a bit more using my blood ketone reader. And I've also been using the breath ketone meter from Biosense. They sent me this to do a review on and I've used breath ketone meters in the past. Obviously blood is gonna be the most accurate, but it is so annoying to prick your fingers all the time. Like all my fingertips are bruised. I've been tracking the last couple of days just out of curiosity to see how different things are impacting my ketone levels and also comparing it to Biosense. And yeah, like all of my fingers are bruised. I like go to prick it and I'm like afraid to press the button again. I'm like, Ugh. but anyways, yeah. So I've used other breath ketone meters in the past. Usually they're not great. Usually they're not accurate. But the reason I agreed to test out Biosense is because this device is actually medical grade. It is actually the only breath ketone meter that is FDA registered. It has been shown to be highly accurate as compared to blood ketones. So obviously this is a lot easier to use. You don't have to prick your fingers, which is great. It uses a bit of a different scale. Like you don't get millimoles per liter. They track using ACEs and based on how many ACEs you get, that will coincide with different benefits. Really easy to use. You turn it on and it kind of vibrates to clean out the sensors. And I'll give you a quick demonstration once it warms up. Okay, so it says to blow. And you basically just blow until it vibrates. And I scored a nine, which is low level of ketones. I think the cutoff for moderate ketosis is 11. So some ketones, but not too many. Not fussed with that. That's what I would expect right now. Um, but yeah, that's just been kind of fun. And there's been a couple days where I've been doing, oh my God, it's just cleaning out now. Um, oh, well, just dropped it. <laughs> there's been a few days where I've been experimenting with some longer fasts and I think I got up to like 25. So that was like a therapeutic level of ketosis which has been kind of fun to track. Next up, we have drinks that help with blood sugar. So I think I've mentioned good idea a couple times on YouTube or have I not mentioned it at all? I've mentioned it on Instagram and on TikTok. Okay, so first off, 
I get asked a lot about alternatives to apple cider vinegar because I recommend taking apple cider vinegar before meals that are higher in carbohydrates because vinegar allows our cells to accept glucose more readily. So as a result, the blood sugar and insulin response to that meal is a lot lower. So yeah, my recommendation is usually add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar into a glass of water and drink that before your meal. <laughs> yeah, apple cider vinegar, it doesn't taste the best. I don't mind it, honestly, especially if I put it in like sparkling water, add a little bit of lemon, totally fine. Um, but some people are really opposed to the taste. So I get asked a lot for alternatives and for a long time, I really didn't have anything to recommend. The only other options were taking other types of vinegar and honestly apple cider vinegar is the best out of other types of vinegar in terms of drinking in my opinion and then i found this brand called good idea that does a similar thing to taking apple cider vinegar before a meal so it doesn't contain apple cider vinegar it contains a blend of amino acids but it essentially works in the same way. It helps your cells to accept glucose more readily and it lowers the blood sugar and insulin response to the meal. So before I even shared it on Instagram, I tested it and I'll put my test results here. I think I ate a meal that had like 35 or 40 grams of carbohydrates in it. Um, I ate it one day without taking good idea before and my blood sugar increased as expected. And then the following day I ate the same meal, but I drank one third of a can of Good Idea before and then I sipped on it as I ate the meal. And I think it was something like my blood sugar response was 20% lower. It'll be on the little infographic I put here, but that's a big difference. So this is fantastic, but this is currently only available in the US. I do have a promo code for it if you're in the US. I think it's just Kate. But anyways, I'll link everything I've mentioned in this video in the description box down below, and I'll put the code down there as well. But if you're not in the States, because I'm working with Good Idea, um, because I'm now a brand ambassador, they were able to ship me some cans, but obviously I live in Australia. I have now found an alternative that is available in Australia. I found this at Woolworths. Actually, someone first sent it to me on Instagram. This is from Remedy. They're a kombucha brand usually, and they've just come out with these drinks, and the ingredients are carbonated water and then apple cider vinegar. And then it has like stevia sweetening it, hibiscus tea, lemon juice, lime bitters, lemon, vanilla. So there's only eight calories in a can, and obviously, it contains apple cider vinegar. So it should have a similar response to just taking apple cider vinegar that you pour in a glass. I'm not sure exactly how much is in a can and I haven't run any blood sugar experiments with this just yet. But as far as I can tell, it will have a similar effect as taking apple cider vinegar and as good ideas. So if you're in Australia, these are available at Woolworths. I don't think there are Kohl's yet. I haven't seen them there but maybe I need to take another look. Um, yeah, so loving both of these. Oh, this doesn't taste like apple cider vinegar at all. And they have a bunch of flavors. All of the ones I've tried have been really good. So check these out. Might even just crack this open now. Ooh. Oh yeah, obviously no sugar in it or anything. So cheers to stable blood sugar. <laughs> now the next thing I've been loving are these crates from Kmart. And I first wanted to purchase some little crates for my office just for on my shelf. I'm staring at them right now and they're all filled. So I'm just gonna put a photo up on the screen. And I was looking all online. All the ones were like, uh, just not well priced for how many I wanted. And then of course, good old Kmart has everything you need. I saw them there, they had a whole bunch of different colors. I think they had pink, I bought some green ones, I think they had blue ones as well. And I've just been using them for everything. Like I said, I have all my camera gear and products and things for work on my bookshelf right here. I will put some B-roll up of how I have them in my closet because I've been putting some like sweatpants and jeans and stuff in them um, because I don't have a whole lot of closet space and that's been kind of handy. And yeah, I've just been loving them. I've went back a few times to buy more and I've just been storing everything in them. 
They look kind of cool and they're functional. They stack. Love them. <laughs> And my final favorite for September is my Whoop band. So I've had this band for a year now. This is the Whoop 4.0. I actually did a full review video on my main channel, but I think this video is gonna come out before that one. So <laughs> if you're not subscribed to my main channel, subscribe there if you wanna watch that review. I think I'm posting it like beginning of October. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be up at some point. Um, so I got this band a year ago. I was previously using the Whoop 3.0. Oh, if I haven't said already, it's a health, fitness, recovery, sleep tracker. And I used it for a few months. Then I kind of got in a groove where I didn't really want to track anything for a while. Um, in the last couple of months, I've gotten back into it. And let me tell you, I have fallen in love with it all over again. Just the insight it provides and the updates they've made to the app since the 3.0 are fantastic. It gives you a lot of insight into how different things you do every day impact your sleep and your recovery. So every morning when you wake up, you go through this kind of checklist and you check off things you've done. Did you do red light therapy the day before? Did you get a massage? Did you spend time outdoors? Did you eat a keto diet? Did you eat a vegan diet? Did you eat a carnivore diet? Did you have a cat sleeping in your room? Did you take creatine? Did you take magnesium? You can basically go into your settings and turn on all the ones that are applicable to you that you do or don't do and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of things you can have on your checklist, but like I said, only pick the ones that are applicable to you. And then at the end of every month, it gives you a report and it tells you how much each of these things either helped or hindered your recovery. So for myself, when I took magnesium and when I took creatine and when I did red light therapy, those all were the biggest contributors to helping my recovery, to improving my sleep and alcohol was the biggest negative impact on my sleep and recovery, followed by having a high strain score. And what was the other one? Oh, eating too close to bedtime. Those are my three worst ones. All of that makes total sense, but yeah, it's just really interesting to see. And when you're tracking your workouts and stuff, it's super insightful. Now, spoiler, in my full review video, I do say that it probably provides too much information for anyone who's just a casual exerciser, for anyone who is just looking to improve their health in general. I really think that you need to have specific athletic goals or be an athlete in order for it to be worth it because it is a subscription model. You do have to pay monthly. It's not cheap. Um, I think the cheapest it can be is $30 a month if you pay upfront for two years. So yeah, that's why I say I don't think it is necessary and ideal for people who are just have general goals. Um, but if you have more specific goals, if you're a competitive athlete, then cannot recommend it enough. It is so, so good. But yeah, anyways, those are the things I've been loving right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> if you did, let me know and I'll do another one next month because this was kind of fun putting together a list and I didn't really plan it too much other than just writing down some things I'm currently loving. Um, but also let me know in the comments down below what are some things you're currently loving. They can literally be anything. I mean, I think everything I talked about today was related to health and fitness, but anything you're loving right now, TV shows, whatever, leave them down below. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.